Number seven then from the 2006 Higher Maths Paper 1, double angle formula, 2x single x, double angle equation, four marks. One nuisance is this business about it being in degrees. I know you're happier in degrees, but strictly speaking it's quite a pest answering a question in degrees. It's better with the ones with radians, because strictly speaking, x degrees has to appear that way throughout all the working. Whenever you write x through the algebra of it, it'll have to be x degrees. And then when you get to the final answer, it'll just be x equals a number. Notice, x is just a number between one, a 0 and 360, and then the degree signs are included here. Whereas usually, just about all of us do this, you probably do it just by writing x down, and then when you get your answer, you put the degree signs in. Which is really the wrong way round. I suppose that would count as bad form, and you don't lose any marks for that, so that's probably the way you would do it. But I'll go through it rigorously, in other words, tediously putting the little degree signs in until I get to the end. So the first part is, right, what's the formula for this? Can't remember? It's at the front. So, sine of x degrees. Sine 2x would be 2 sine x cos x. 2 sine x degrees. Cos x degrees equals 0. Don't forget to put in the equals 0. So if you don't put in the equals zeros, you'll lose a mark. Perversely, it says somehow or other you need to put it in both times, but you should have it in all the time, or all three times, whatever. Next part is factorise it. Right, well, sine x is a common factor, so take that out. We've got 1 minus 2 cos x equals 0. It's important for it to equal 0 when it's factorised, because it's only when it's equal to 0 you can say for definite which these, what these two parts can be. For a product equals 0, one of them must be 0. So either you've got sine of x equals 0, or you've got cos of x equals a half. Should put the or in. Now, the mark so far. Well, the first mark was for putting in the correct formula, which you simply found from the front. The second mark was for factorising, realising you'd have to factorise it to solve it. The next mark was to find the values of the two factors. And the final mark is just, what are those answers? Now remember, this time when I'm putting the answers down, it's just going to be x equals. And it's paper one, so there's no calculator, so these should all be known or exact values. That comes straight from the sine graph. When is the sine equal to 0? At 0, 180, 360. 0, 180, 360. And 360 is included. Notice there's no wee degree signs here anymore. This is just what the value of x is. This one... It's one of the exact values that will come from the triangle. It's got 1s and 2s, it must be the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. 1's the smallest, it must be the smallest angle, 30 is there. Ooh. So, cosine is adjacent, that's adjacent to 60, so that means for this one x is 60, or what's the other one? You can either go all sine tan cos, or you can think of the cosine curve. If one answer is at 60, the other answer must be symmetrically placed from the ends, 60 in, 60 back, so that must be 300. Or you could do the equivalent analogue, which is the all sine tan cos, positive. So it's either 60 here, or it's 60 back from the end, 60 or 360 minus 60, same answer. And that's the fourth mark. Now, the fourth mark doesn't, you don't need to put them into numerical order, but I'll just finish off that way. 0, 60, 180, 300, and 360. I'll say there's the fourth mark. There is something else that you probably wouldn't think of. You see it in other questions. It used to be you'd have to be careful when you're making up questions to say at the end, solve this algebraically. Because if you just say solve and it's some geometrical question, You'd be perfectly entitled to make a scale diagram of it, a scale drawing. You could do that here. You could say, well, what have we got here? If sine x minus sine 2x equals 0, that means sine x should equal sine 2x. And then you can think, oh, what do the graphs look like for that? Well, sine x goes through once, and sine 2x goes through twice. So it's going to go up, down, finish here, up, down, finish there. Notice how there's the five answers, but there's only 
these answers that you can get exactly from the diagram because you know those are the only ones you know exactly where they are you don't know where these two are that's the one at 16 that's the one at 300 if you did try to answer the question by drawing those by sketching those graphs you'd only get two marks out of the four because effectively you're only getting the answer to this sine x equals zero part but you wouldn't even consider doing that now that I've got this written here you could do this I don't know if you'd think of doing this either. You could say, I'll expand that now, 2 sine x cos x. So you might say, oh, I've got sine x equals 2 sine x. Well, I could cancel them out. Divide both sides by sine x. So I've got 1 equals 2 cos x. So you've got cos x equals a half. Of course, I should all the b degree signs should be in there. So that means x is equal to, as before, the 6300. Maybe some of you are going, nah, 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 can you do that? Well, in fact, you can. You can divide out variables in an equation if you're careful with your division. It's perfectly permissible to divide by a variable as long as you have certain qualifications. I can divide by sine x. So long as, in this line here, so long as that thing that I'm dividing by, that sine x, is not equal to zero. So this is a two-part case or a two-case part solution. This will be a solution as long as sine x is not equal to zero. So you could say case, sine x is not equal to zero. And there you are, there's two of the answers. But you also have to consider the other case, what if sine x was equal to zero? What if sine x, I'll put it down this way, case, sine x equals zero, because that's the thing I've excluded so far. This works for all the cases where sine x is not equal to zero. If sine x isn't zero, those are solutions. Now, what if sine x was equal to zero? That's not included in this part. Is that a solution? Does it satisfy the equation? Is the sine of zero equal to the sine? Yes, it is. So, case that is a solution, so now I consider it is a solution because it fits the equation. And the solution to that is x equals zero, 180, 360. You could do that as well. The marks would be, I think, along the same line here, it would be one mark for the formula, and then there's one mark for the cases. So it's split between these two. By doing sine x is not equal to zero, this would have to be shown explicitly if you're doing it this way, that you're taking, considering the two cases. Then there'd be one for the cos, and then there'd be one for the sine. And then there's one for the cases. But you'd probably just go for the straightforward factorization.